What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are going to be reacting to what Dan Orlowski had to say about Matthew Stafford's future as a Detroit Lion and why it could be up soon. Let's get it started. What is up, everybody? And welcome back to another video. Glad you guys are here. And today we have an exciting one. You know, this is going to be a great video where we're talking about Dan Orlowski because Dan Orlowski always has these great takes to react to. A lot of time I actually agree with him. So this is going to be awesome. You know, this video is going to be great. Before we get into it, we got to do a couple of things. The first thing is we have to go check out the board. And this is our question and comment of the video. Yes, two and one. This is a great day. The question is this, what will the Tampa Bay Buccaneers record be in 2020? In the last video, I asked you guys, what will the Saints record be in 2020? And I think I ended up with 11 and five. Now these are just kind of off the top of our heads. Maybe right before the season, I'll do a prediction on everybody. But for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I'm thinking somewhere around nine and seven. I don't see them as a Super Bowl contender. I don't see them as a deep playoff threat. I see them as a nine and seven team that could squeak into the playoffs. Um, kind of a wild card opponent for us. And that's why that game could end up being very, very important at the end of the year. So I'm gonna go nine and seven. I think the Saints do win that division. So there you go. That is my prediction. Let me know yours in the comments below. And also, what is your favorite NFL video game? Now, this is from Hungry Panda Studios. And why it says NFL video game is because it's not just Madden. Because there was other video game companies back a while ago before Madden kind of just took over everything. And there still is. There still is other video games out there. I know there's some crazy one. I know there's uh, Backyard Football is a game. There's, I think it's like Football League Mutants or something. you got a lot of crazy things. And then before Madden really took over, there was 2K. I think it was called 2K, 2K NFL or something. They had all these games. And I think the last one was 05. And a lot of people loved that one. I never really got to play that one. I was too young. The first Madden I played was 2006. Uh, I think it was Donovan McNabb on the cover. I think that's who it was. I'm pretty sure it was the Eagles player. I think that's who it was. So comment below what your favorite NFL video game is of all time. I always want to say Madden. That's a good one. That's a good one. I, mm, I would have to say probably Madden 08. I think Madden 08 was great for me. But again, that's what I remember the most. And, uh, you know, those are kind of just... Those are kind of just nostalgic. So I would go with Madden 08, probably. But I definitely think there's some good ones. Backyard football is good. I mean, don't sleep on backyard football. And I'm sure there's some other good ones out there. I know NFL Street was awesome. I loved that game. So let me know in the comments below. Now, let's get into the video. So recently, Dan Orlowski talked about Matthew Stafford. And apparently, he also said this to Matthew Stafford. So we're not just getting this information. He also talked to Matthew Stafford about the same thing and what his future could look like with Detroit. This is very intriguing stuff. Very excited to bring to you guys because I do think it is a major concern for us fans this is something that we do need to talk about and I think we've talked about before but Dan Orlowski kind of brought it back up so I think it's time for us to react to it once again Dan Orlowski says this he'll win this year or a winner will come get him now at first I read that and I'm like hold up are you saying a winner's gonna come in and take a spot that's not what he's saying he said he'll win this year or a winning team a winning winning organization will go make an effort to get him that's kind of how he's looking at this he'll say he has to work this year for the Detroit Lions or someone will come get him and I think a big reason because of that and I didn't see him talk about that you know in the article but I think a big reason that he's saying that is because he looks at the map Patricia Bob Quinn Arab regime whatever you want to call it and he looks at that and says okay well if they're not successful they're not gonna be back all of a sudden his future is completely Completely up in the air so they need to be successful that way that is not the case because I think the Lions are successful the Lions will keep Stafford you know they can keep the backups things like that and they'll kind of keep it rolling right they'll continue to build around Matthew Stafford which is what we should do and we'll get into that later as it worked up to this point because we haven't been able to build around him for some reason we have just not had that much success building around him we've had peaks but we haven't been able to have it consistent I know Matt Patricia is doing his best to do that we got to work with Matthew Stafford he said that was a huge reason he took this job because he knew he already had an elite franchise quarterback I'll say this about Matt Matthew Stafford, uh, unbelievable guy. He's amazing. Yeah. Uh, really going back to last spring and, um, you know, putting a new offense in, you know, hiring a new offensive coordinator, trying to develop and grow him as a player um, and all the things that he had going on. Man, he's the same guy every day. He's tough. He's smart. He, the most amazing thing about I'll shoot him a text and be like, hey, what do you think about this guy? I could be talking. I'm telling you, it could be a Pop Warner kid in, like, Dearborn, like, you know, B team, and he would know him. He's just a football junkie, and I yeah. love it, you know. Right. I love getting in those meetings with him and talking about defense and what I see and what he sees. And, um, and he's just tough. He's competitive, and he's just an outstanding leader. You know, yeah. there's nobody that those guys don't get fired up for more to go play. And, you know, he's extremely talented on top he of is, it. He is, right. So, uh, all that in effect, uh, I'm, it's one of the reasons for me um, 
that I, you know, he is one of the reasons I left New England. It, you know, there was a lot of opportunities that I had, but um, to go be around a guy like Matthew Stafford, for me, um, it was a great opportunity to grow as a coach and be able to be around a great player. So from that aspect of it, uh, you know, I couldn't be more more happy. Yeah. So obviously, if you're an NFL coach coming in, it's great to have that in place because they understand how hard it is to find a quarterback. We'll also talk about that a little bit later in the video. Then he says this: If they don't win, it's probably their right. It's probably the right decision. All right. So that may rub some people the wrong way. He says this, and it's not because they didn't. It's, it's they did it not win because of him. So he's saying, look, it's not his fault that they're not winning, but he is saying it could be the right decision. Dan Orlowski is basically saying here is that the Lions organization could be looking at it and saying, okay, it didn't work. We weren't able to be successful with Matthew Stafford. Let's, you know, just basically hit the reset button. Let's reboot and let's go get another quarterback. But again, this would most likely be the Lions organization kind of looking at it this way because obviously they've had Stafford since 2009 and it would be a new regime, right? It wouldn't be Matt Patricia and Bob Quinn because most likely if they are not successful enough to keep Matthew Stafford, they're not going to keep their jobs. If they're successful, Matthew Stafford, I don't see going anywhere. Yeah, maybe they'll look for a backup, a future replacement, things like that. They may have already done that with David Blau, but I just really don't see that they could be successful and then also say, you know what? Now it's time to move on from Matthew Stafford because they are successful. A lot of it's going to have to do with Matthew Stafford because the Lions have not consistently put a good team around him. What do I mean by good team? I'm not saying he doesn't have weapons. People always think, oh yeah, he had Kelvin, he had, you know, Titus Young, he had Nate Burleson, he had, you know, all these Kenny Galladay, Marvin Jones, he has all these weapons. Why are they not winning? It's not not about the dang receiver. Stafford's put up the numbers. So if you want to take into consideration how many offensive weapons he has, okay, let's do it then. And that's why he's top in almost every statistical category by his age. Matthew Stafford's the fastest quarterback to 40,000 passing yards. You gave him those weapons. He's done more than enough with those weapons. It's the things that he doesn't control. How well the rushing attack works. How well the defense plays. The plays that he doesn't have an effect on, that's where the Lions have not been able to play well. It's obvious, right? The Matthew Stafford's putting up these ridiculous numbers. He's got these numbers to be one of the best quarterbacks of all time, yet we're not successful. But then some people want to look at it and say, well, you know what? Matthew Stafford, you know, you got to be better than that. Well, clearly Matthew Stafford's been doing his thing because how many quarterbacks hit 40,000 passing yards in a time that he did? None. Matthew Stafford's the fastest to do it. So you gave him the weapons to pass and he's done his thing with it. But you have to give him a run game and a defense. And if you don't do that, you're not going to win football games. And that's what people miss. And we're going to get to drafted quarterbacks because people are looking at this saying, well, let's just go get a new quarterback. But what you're basically saying is with what the Lions have done with Matthew Stafford, with the running game and defense, you're basically saying if we get a new quarterback, he'll He'll be good enough to take this team, whatever the heck we've been building, and make them a Super Bowl contender, which they won't because you would need someone not only as good as Stafford, you would need him on a complete another level. And I don't know if there's any people that high above Matthew Stafford that could take what the Lions have put around him consistently to a Super Bowl. I just don't see it. 2014 would have been your best chance. But aside from that, I really don't see it. Russell Wilson is the only guy that I think you could possibly make a case that somehow, some way, with the best we put around Matthew Stafford at one point could go win a Super Bowl. Because I really just don't see it amongst quarterbacks. And let's roll through some of these quarterbacks and we'll get back into what Dan Orlowski had to say. Basically, what I did is I went from 2009 to 2017. Now, I made a video on stop taking Matthew Stafford for granted just because it's so hard to find a quarterback, but people don't realize that. So if you guys want to see that full breakdown video, you can. This one's kind of just summed up short and sweet. And basically what I did is I ran through these years, 2009 through 2017. Didn't go any higher because I think it's too new, right? If you look at 2018, 19, you're saying, oh, these are where they are already. It can't really do that, right? You've seen guys like Peyton Manning struggle the first year. You could say, hey, Peyton Manning's going to be trash. But it turns out Peyton Manning's one of the best of all time. And then you see other quarterbacks stand off early. RG3, possibly Baker Mayfield. And all of a sudden, they could really struggle. So I think it's way too early to look at those guys. 2017, maybe too early. 2016, maybe too early. It takes a long time as a quarterback at times to really come into your own. We saw that with Ryan Tannehill. But what we're going to do is go through these draft years. I'm going to tell you how many quarterbacks I think you could even make a case is better than Matthew Stafford. And then we'll then we'll see how many came out out of all of these quarterbacks drafted. Any of these quarterbacks are better than Matthew Stafford, okay? I think maybe a few, maybe a few. I'm going to name a few just to be a little generous here, okay? I'll add an extra couple to be generous. So let's start at 2009, where the two best quarterbacks, in my opinion, out of this draft class were Josh Friedman and Mark Sanchez, obviously, instead of Matthew Stafford. Those are the two best quarterbacks out of this draft class. There was no quarterback in this class that's even arguably better than Stafford. Let's not even try. 2010, same thing. I didn't see one. Colt McCoy and Sam Bradford were the best to me. Sam Bradford had a little bit of a peak, but come on, man. Neither of these guys are even close. 2011, now some people may try to make an argument here. Again, I went with zero. So the first three years, I say there's no quarterbacks even arguably better than Stafford. I saw Cam Newton, Andy Dalton, Tyrod Taylor, and Colin Kaepernick. I think Kaepernick, obviously, we know the situation there. Tyrod Taylor's been a solid NFL backup, but seriously, if you're really going to try to say he's better than Stafford, you may need to get something checked out, okay? That is not good. 
Uh, you got a guy, Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton, okay, I think, you know what, he's kind of been in a tough situation like Stafford, so I think he's actually the closest. And Cam Newton, sure, he did win an MVP, but then he completely fell off. And we've already done stat comparisons. I mean, they're not on the same level in terms of passing. So for me, when I look at it, maybe Andy Dalton is close there, but again, none of those quarterbacks to me are better than Stafford. I don't think you can make a legitimate case for that. 2012 is where you see quarterbacks that could be. You see Andrew Luck, who's unfortunately not in the league anymore, but he was going to be great. Matt, Andrew Luck was great. I, he was really, really good. I can't even deny it. And then you got Russell. Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson, I know this hurts to say, but I think you could easily say that he's better than Stafford. I think he's the best quarterback in the league right now. Russell Wilson is a good one. That's a check mark. You got Ryan Tannehill, who, yes, last year balled out. Really didn't do a ton up till that point. I think he had a good rookie year with Miami Dolphins, but what happened there with Ryan Tannehill is kind of like what Dan Orlovsky is saying that, hey, a, team, a winning team, a winning organization will go find Stafford. They'll go make the trade and put him on that team. Kind of like they did with Ryan Tannehill. Tannehill wasn't putting up ridiculous numbers before he went to uh, before he went to the Titans. But once the Titans put him on their team and they could run the football and they could play some defense, Ryan Tannehill looks all of a sudden like one of the best quarterbacks in the league. And it's like, well, that's because you put him on a good team. That's that's what quarterbacks need. They need help too. And that's what you saw with Ryan Tannehill. You have Nick Foles and then Kirk Cousins. Nick Foles won a Super Bowl, but he's uh, now with the Bears. We'll see how that goes. And then you have Kirk Cousins. Okay, so Kirk Cousins... Um, I think you can make a case he's top 10. I don't think he's better than Stafford, but I think you can make a case he's top 10. Some people say, well, Nick Foles is better because he won a Super Bowl. Please, let's not start that debate. Okay, there are so many bad quarterbacks that have won a Super Bowl. Please, let's not get into that. And, uh, you know, there's so many good quarterbacks that have not won a Super Bowl. Okay, so let's let's not even start that. But I think you could maybe make a case for like two, possibly three here. Maybe we'll get into that at the end. 2013, I saw zero again. Landry Jones, I think, was the best quarterback in this class. Come on, man. Landry Jones be better than Stafford. 2014, Bridgewater, Carr, Jimmy Garoppolo were the three I took. Maybe Jimmy Garoppolo in the future. Derek Carr had a big peak, but that kind of fell off. Then Bridgewater, we'll see how he does now uh, taking over an organization as a starter. But, you know, he was good. With, I thought he was good. I thought he was, you know, a little bit above average with the Minnesota Vikings, but he wasn't Stafford level. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, he's moving around for reasons, right? He wasn't Stafford level. He was a backup. And uh, I think maybe Jimmy Garoppolo in the future, but as of now, no. That's why it's kind of hard to, kind of hard to do this. Uh, Jimmy Winston, Mariota, 2015. Neither of those guys are better than Stafford. Neither of them. Mariota, for sure. I mean, that guy kind of fell off completely. That's crazy. And he won a playoff game. And now look where he is. Uh, 2016. All right, you got Carson Wentz, Dak Prescott, Jared Goff. I think you can honestly make a case for two here. I won't say they are, but I will include them just to, you know, be a little generous. And then in 2017, you have guys like Mahomes and Watson. Again, I'll include those two as well because I think a lot of people think Mahomes is the best quarterback in the league. I don't think he is, but I think he's up there. I think he's great. And then Deshaun Watson, I think, is also a great quarterback. So out of all of those draft classes, right, 2009 to 2017, which was 104 drafted quarterbacks in total, 104, not including a draft and anything like that, seven seven of those players that we say you could even make an argument are better than Stafford. That is Patrick Mahomes, Deshaun Watson, Carson Wentz, Dak Prescott, okay, Russell Wilson, Ryan Tannehill, and Jimmy Garoppolo. Those are the quarterbacks that we came up with that I think you can make a case, all right? Those are the quarterbacks. Seven of the 104, which leaves you with 6%. So basically, you got a 6% chance to arguably land someone better than Matthew Stafford. And what we're saying here is, no, you don't just need Matthew Stafford. You need someone insanely better than Matthew Stafford. You need someone that's on a completely different tier than Matthew Stafford if you're somehow going to be even win a Super Bowl and be that kind of team because of what you put around Matthew Stafford historically, right? You would need someone incredibly great. So the odds of you finding that are so slim and none. It's, it's like, this is why we want to keep Matthew Stafford. This is why we want to be successful because it's so difficult to find a quarterback. It's not just, hey, I want a quarterback, go draft one you're good it doesn't work out like that you may find someone average you may find someone that could get that can you know be serviceable but that's not what the lions need man if you want to go in a super bowl and you put no running game and defense around him and you bring in i don't know you bring in teddy bridgewater you're not winning a super bowl i hate to tell you it's not going to happen because you are not good enough around him and again kind of the ryan tanner situation we saw the opposite we saw it flipped and that's what dan orlowski believes could happen with stafford and i don't want to see him traded i mean i've talked about this on the detroit sports room and that interview and I don't want to see it happen because I know how valuable Matthew Stafford is. Not just because he's been here for a long time. It's because we need this guy to win football games. We have the quarterback. Let's fix the problems. And we've continued to try to do that. I know Matt Patricia and Bob Quinn are doing their thing, trying to fix that and turn it around. And sometimes it does take a step back before you can take those steps forward and take that giant leap. And I believe the Lions can do it. I think the Lions can do it. Um, but that's why they need to continue to be successful so they can continue to build this. Because once we restart again, at the point they're just going to say, you know what, let's just completely restart. 
and all of a sudden we could be down we could be down for a few years unless somehow the new guys come in and they find a way to build a team but then it'd been just great to have Matthew Stafford because we would have won anyways so we're not in a great spot here if we get rid of Stafford we're just not we need to be successful Dan Orlovsky I think is speaking facts here even though it's very sad and hopefully Matthew Stafford you know stays here and hopefully the Lions are successful enough hopefully this regime stays because I believe in it hopefully they stay and they can make this thing work so there you go let me know your thoughts in the comments below thank you for watching and I'm out